I want to post about Israel being in adultery and they don't know it because Hillel converted to Rome and was forced to teach his practice, their practices, because they were forced to, Israel was forced to teach the Roman canons by death. And this was from Constantine's time. They have not allowed anybody to convert to the true Torah's law, uh, to the true Torah's months or feasts or Sabbaths since Constantine came into power to this day. So everything that's taught in Israel was Hillel's doctrine, who converted to Rome. He denounced the, com the commandments. He denounced the, he denounced the Torah. He denounced God. He denounced the Messiah and teaches that the Messiah converted to Rome, which he did not. It was actually Hillel that did. So... Israel, you're being deceived, and it breaks my heart because the original canons, if you look up the original canons of Constantine, look up Hillel, look up the history of Hillel, look up what he did. He tried to make it believe, everybody believe that the Roman solar calendar was a Jewish calendar, but that's why he tried to add a 13th month to the so-called Hebrew calendar that he said he fixed. It's actually forcing the solar calendar, making it look Jewish, and because Rome forced the solar calendar on all nations and um, their, their laws and their doctrines. So nobody's been allowed to convert to the God of Israel in truth or to the Torah or to the commandments in truth that's why they reject that's why they reject the the prophets the main prophets that talk about the messiah too because rome banned the messiah of israel they used the name jesus on their practices to make jews hate him so they would reject the actual way to the new covenant that god sent me knowing that rome would destroy all the ways of conversion the feast of conversion that they would ban them and keep men from converting to him uh through the to keep the passover they banned the passover they banned the sabbath they banned the months of god so that's why he knew they were going to do that. So that's why he sent his Holy One, his adopted son, uh, the son of David, to um, to be the way of conversion to high priest and Passover and offering. And he had to be raised to raise the dead of Israel because he went and released the dead of Israel, opening the graves, like it says in Zechariah 14. I'm sorry, bleh, Zechariah 9, uh, 11. And it's confirmed in Matthew 27, 52, 53, that he raised the dead of Israel that were under the animal blood covering of the first covenant that could not cleanse their sins and became their cleansing. And they were raised with him. So I'm just asking Israel to please, I'm asking you please to seek the Torah, seek the truth, seek the law and prophets. Just read them. Do not believe in man's teachings this day. Everything is taught. This is the time of deception. And everything that's taught today is Roman influenced, Roman enforced. Okay. And, and it has it because they would not allow anybody or any Jews to, to convert to, or any Gentiles to convert to Judaism. They would not allow Judaism at all. And they stole the law and prophets and lay, claimed it was their religion. It was teaching their religion and called it the Bible. But the Bibles are actually the Law and Prophets and the testimony of what was fulfilled in the Law and Prophets. They were claiming them all as Christian Bibles, the later ones, the letters and the to the Jews. And, um, you know, there was Jews confirming to Jews in Greece and, and Rome that in the synagogues that the Messiah had come in Jerusalem. So this is why they were, you know, they were speaking in the Greek. They were sending letters in Greek because... And it also was confirming Isaiah 28, chapter 28, and I think it's 6, where it says, um, I will speak to these in, um, with stuttering lips and a, uh, another tongue or language. So he was speaking of the strutter which Paul was, he stuttered. So, and Paul was talking about the ordinances of the law that for conversion and sacrifice and circumcision were performed by the Messiah, not the law. The law was not done away with. Rome made everybody believe the law was done away with because they enforced their law that banned the law of God and enforced their solar calendar and their their law, their political law that was adopted as a religion and enforced it on all, all nations. And they're the ones that teach that the law is done away with. Jesus did not teach that. And Jesus is the Greek name of Yehoshua, the Messiah, Joshua. So... The thing is, is that he's the Joshua, the high priest. He is the high priest that we are, that God sent to bring us to be intercession, just like Moses. He was the lawgiver. He wrote the law into our hearts and minds, as it is confirmed in the Romans, Act 2.15. 
He um, circumcised the hearts of anybody who accepts him to be the way to the God of Israel, to convert to the God of Israel, because he is not trying to replace God. He is the way to God, uh, to the God of Israel. And God's given him authority over everything, and it says he will give us his earth, the earth as footstool, as his footstool, you know, um, because he gave his life for all, for all of Israel. So, and Gentiles that want to convert too. So, you know, but don't ever question God that he can't have a son and that he can't do this thing. <laughs> God can do anything. So don't question him. You, you just read the law and prophets, read the Torah. It's all in there. There's nothing but truth in there. You can't miss it. If you're looking and you're reading it and paying attention and you read it all, and you can't just read one little portion and say, oh, you know, blah, blah. you know, you got to read the whole thing. So anyway, uh, I just really want people to read because Israel is in danger. They are in idolatry. And it says the star, too, that's called the Star of David, quote unquote, is not the Star of David, it's the star that Solomon used for witchcraft. And Israel adopted it later, and I'm asking you, please, to get that out of your house, get it off of your body, because it is not of the God of Israel. It is, it is idolatry to him. And he talks about it in Amos 5, 8, or 8, 5, one or the other. I always get those backwards. Um, so Amos 8, 5, or 5, 8, read those two. <laughs> Amos 5, 8, or 8, 5. Um, one of them is talking about the star of um, that star, and... It's called the Star of Chiyun or Malek. And I don't want to, I don't want to say the names of their gods because they're stupid. But anyway, um, the, they're just stone and wood, whatever. So anyway, I just want you to please be aware of the words, the words, the, the, the law and prophets. It's been given to everyone to read so he, everybody can be prepared because, he is not messing around. He is not playing. He is, he's been given his word and given us so much patience, given Israel patience for so many thousands of years. And after a while, he's going to run out. And I'm just asking you please to read and study because the Yehoshua is the son of David that was promised to David from a long time ago. And he said he would have, give him a king to reign in it forever on the throne. And that's who he was. That's who he is. And so... He had, I mean, just like Elisha was raised and, and raised and he didn't die. Um, there was a child that one of the prophets, um, you know, was raised from dead that, that had aneurysm. And, you know, why would anybody question that the Messiah of Israel or that, that Jesus was raised? Okay, just because he was called Jesus in the Greek tongue, you know, but he was a Jew. He was of the tribe of Judah. He fulfilled all of the prophecies in the law. If you read Genesis forty nine eleven. Uh, Zechariah 9, 9 through 11, um, this fulfilled Matthew 21 exactly word for word. He came in a donkey on a donkey and a donkey's colt, both, both. And it's confirmed exactly. And read Zechariah um, chapter 1 through 6. These are all speaking about all these things, that speaking of him in different forms. As the lamp of God. He's the menorah of God. He's the menorah. And Revelations 1, he's the menorah of God. Um, he's the um, He's the lamb, also considered the lamb, uh, with seven eyes. And that's in Zechariah, uh, I think it's three. Um, so just read, please just read. Um, I might be off on that. It talks about how he's going to take the place of Yehoshua, Joshua, uh, the high priest that preceded Moses, because he is Joshua, the high priest that preceded Moses, and he's the lawgiver that preceded Moses. So that was sent and sent by God. It says in Isaiah 53 that he was he was pleased to bruise him and to take to because he took upon the sins of of, of Israel, you know, because he knew he would save them. And so this is very important. All you got to do is read, take maybe. You know, take maybe take a week of your life and read the Law and Prophets. Just read through the Prophets, at least through some of them. And it's so obvious. It's just that they are not allowed. They are been. They have been from Constantine time. Constantine's time, they killed all the Jews that were teaching the Messiah, and anybody that was teaching the Messiah that that didn't denounce the Messiah was killed. That's what Rome killed them. So anybody that was left over 
of the Jews, Israeli Jews, were converted to Rome. Okay, and they had to teach the Roman law. They had to teach the ban. They had to deny the Messiah. They had to deny the God of Israel and or do their false doctrine of Hillel. So because he was the Sanhedrin, but now he's not because they, you know, the whole high priest order was knocked out by Rome. And this is confirmed that he said he would he would stop the new moons and Sabbaths from being kept. And that's in uh, Hosea chapter two. And um, also, if you look at Isaiah eight twenty. Or eight chapter eight and eight twenty, but eight twenty says anybody that doesn't speak the law and the testimony, there is no light in them. That means that there's no life. There's no life if they don't speak the law and the testimony of the Messiah is what they're talking about. So please, please read these because these are all letters of Judaism. This is they're keeping the feast of tabernacles. They're keeping the feast of Passover. They're keeping the feast of weeks, but it's called Pentecost in Greek. So all the Greek, they're all Greek letters and books that are explaining about the feast of judaism and the the new moons and sabbaths and in, in, in uh colossians chapter 216 please read because this is this is what for you this was supposed to be for you first and then the gentiles so please please read it don't be listen to the man's to the teachings of men they are not in the truth they have been forced to lie from for generations from the time of Constantine. So all the this was to deceive Israel. The whole point of it was because they were trying because the the enemy was trying to deceive Israel, and you know who he is, and everybody tries to deny him, but he's real, or there wouldn't be such hate for God. You understand? So you know he's real. Israel, the tribes of Israel have, and it's been documented through history, and he's blessed the tribes of Israel, and. Believe me, you want to be on his side. So, um, please, you're his people. You're his firstborn, his his love, the apple of his eye that he loves so much. Please seek him out and just read the law and prophets because the only way we can enter the newest covenant of Judaism, that's what he says, that he would make a new covenant um, to the, make a new covenant to the house of Israel and Judah. Um and that was in Jeremiah 31, 31 through 33. He would make a new covenant for the house of Israel and Judah. You know, it would be unlike the one that he made with the fathers of the first covenant. And this covenant, he said, he would write the law into our hearts, into their hearts and minds. And that's exactly what he did. He circumcised their hearts and minds by the Holy Spirit, by his Holy Spirit. And, and this was performed in the book of Acts of the disciples, uh, chapter 2, and confirmed in Colossians to 11 so please 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 just trust god pray and ask him to reveal the truth to you in these words and see and and if you then if you and then after you pray and you read it and then you don't see it then i can understand but please pray and try to read it please pray and try to under please just try to read it and read the parallels together like i said genesis 49 11 zechariah 9 9 through 11 and Matthew 21, these are perfect parallels that are word for word. Okay, and then stop. Um, read uh, Zechariah um, chapter, um, okay, chapter like 1 through 6. And they're explaining, like there's one where he talks about the branch, the almond branch. And he's also explaining that the two um, candlesticks that are next to the, the lamp of God. Well, he's talking about the menorah. And he explains in Zechariah, and I'm sorry, Revelations, which is the revelations of the mysteries of Torah, um, is the revelations. It talks about if you read it, it's all it's all revealing the the mysteries of the Torah is what it is. It's 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 revealing the parables of Torah and it's repeating exactly what it's saying because the prophecies repeat themselves over and over and over. Okay, they repeat themselves over and over and over, and that's what the prophecies do because that's how you know if there's a deception. You know, when somebody is saying something else then this is different. But the prophecies repeat themselves over and over and over. And it's from, for thousands of years, they've been repeated throughout some, so many prophets. They all repeat the same thing. So please just trust. Revelations is repeating everything that is on Isaiah. Um, I'm sorry. It was, uh, okay. The Zechar, I'm sorry. Um, Genesis 49, 11 is actually the two-part prophecy and the second part of the prophecy is the first part he's talking about when he comes and he's riding on the donkey and the donkey's colt 
and he calls himself the vine. He says, I am the vine, you're the branches, meaning the menorah. And it says the vine will be on the colt, the choice vine on the donkey's colt. Okay. And Genesis 49, 11. And then the second part of it says that he will, that he would tread the wine press. That's the second part when he returns. That's, that's a two part prophecy. It's a two part scripture. That is a prophecy of two is coming. If his first coming and second coming to judgment and the second coming, when he says he will tread the wine press and he will stay in his clothing this is fulfilled in Isaiah 63. It's talking about it again in Isaiah 63 and also in Revelations. It's revealing he's treading the wine press and judging judging the nations and judging Israel too. And sadly, because this is why it's so important you come to him. And it says the blood is up to the horse's bridles in the, in the valley. And it's, it's, it's not okay because... People have got to repent. They've got to see what they're, you know, they're being lied to. People have been lied to since Constantine has been in power. So please, please study it. Please study. Please pray. Pray for understanding and study the word of God. And he's your God first. So please just seek him out because he's not kidding around and we don't have much time. And I want Israel to be blessed and be saved and and to repent from all the things that they're doing that they don't realize is sin and that they're in idolatry they don't realize they're in idolatry he loves you so much and he's waited so long for you to repent and just please repent please come to him please 